there are different types of chemical reactions are there today we are discussing about the different types of chemical reaction that are combination reaction decomposition reactions displacement reactions double displacement reactions oxidation reduction reactions precipitation reactions exothermic and endothermic reactions combination reactions combination reactions occur when two substances combine and form a compound sometimes these are called the synthesis or the addition reactions uh, combination reaction means uh, when two reactant is combined to form one product only that means a is a reactant b is another reactant when a and b combine together to form a b that is a product example for combination reaction when hydrogen combines with the oxygen to form water what is a compound hydrogen and oxygen are the elements another example when carbon combines with oxygen form carbon dioxide or magnesium combine with the oxygen magnesium oxide or calcium is combined with oxygen calcium oxide is formed these are the examples of combination reaction combination reactions in combination reactions two or more substances combine to form one single substance let's visualize it with our blocks here let's say we have two substances a and b and they combine to form one product ab this is a combination reaction in combination reactions you have two or more reactants but only one product now let's look at some examples let's say this pink block here is hydrogen and this block is oxygen now when they combine we get water this is a word equation since it's written in words now let's write it as a chemical equation so we have h2 plus o2 giving us h2o note that the product is not a simple join of the formula of the reactants so it's not h2o2 it's h2o because the elements combine according to their valency now here the equation is unbalanced so let's go ahead and balance the equation another example is magnesium and oxygen combine to form magnesium oxide so we have mg plus o2 giving us mgo now let's balance the equation and we get 2 mg plus o2 gives us 2 mgo in these simple examples the reactants were elements and the product was a compound but the reactants can also be compounds let's take an example let's say we have carbon monoxide and oxygen carbon monoxide is a compound and oxygen is an element and when they combine together we get carbon dioxide now why don't you try predicting the next reaction hint it's a combination reaction if you combine sodium and chlorine what are you going to get here sodium and chlorine combine to form the compound sodium chloride but the correct formula is nacl it's not a simple joining of na and cl2 because the elements combine according to their valency and valency of sodium and chlorine is both 1 so we get the formula nacl let's put combination reaction on our concept board the key point is only one product decomposition reaction what is decomposition reaction a reaction in which a substance is broken down into two or more similar substances is known as decomposition reaction the decomposition reaction is the opposite of combination reaction look here a single compound decomposes into two or more for example aluminum oxide aluminum oxide decomposes to yield aluminum metal and oxygen gas so aluminum oxide is a compound al2o3 means aluminum oxide it is a compound and then it decomposes and means it uh, broken down 
one into two parts. That means aluminium and oxygen. Decomposition reactions. Decomposition reactions are the opposite of combination reactions. In decomposition, one compound breaks down into two or more simpler substances. So once again, let's visualize it using our blocks here. Let's say we have a substance AB. It decomposes or breaks down into two substances A and B. This is a decomposition reaction. In decomposition reactions, you have two or more products. But remember, only one reactant. Now let's take a look at some examples. Let's say we have water here. And when you pass electric current, it breaks down into hydrogen and oxygen. This is also known as electrolysis since electric current is used to decompose the compound. Remember, this equation is exactly opposite of what we did in combination, where hydrogen and oxygen combine to form water. Another example of decomposition is when you heat calcium carbonate, it decomposes. Calcium carbonate decomposes to produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. This is called thermal decomposition since heat causes the decomposition. Now let's try predicting the next reaction. Do you know what happens when silver chloride is exposed to sunlight? That's right, silver chloride decomposes into silver and chlorine. Do you know where this reaction is used? or rather was used in black and white photography where the film or the photographic plate contained silver chloride and it decomposed when it was exposed to sunlight to give us the black and white image. Of course now in the digital world everything's digital and we are using SD cards. Now let's consider another example digestion of food. So when you eat food what happens in the digestion process? Is it a combination reaction or a decomposition reaction? What do you think? That's right. The correct answer is decomposition reaction. Our digestive system breaks down the complex food substances into simpler substances. For example, carbohydrates are broken into simpler sugars such as glucose. Proteins decompose to form amino acids. So digestion is a decomposition reaction. Let's pin decomposition reaction on our concept board. Remember the key point? Only one reactant. Displacement reaction. What is a displacement reaction? A reaction in which one part of a molecule is replaced by another is called a displacement reaction. Here I will show you one experiment. If you place a clean iron nail into a beaker of copper sulfate solution, what is the color of copper sulfate solution? Blue color. The blue copper sulfate solution changes to a slightly paler color. Now the nail looks a different color. Okay. It has become a copper color. What has happened here? The iron nail has become coated with the copper. Iron is more reactive than copper and it has pushed out the copper from the copper sulfate solution and has reacted to form iron sulfate. Which element is displacing which? Iron displaces copper. Why could this element displace the other? Because iron is more reactive than copper. This push out is called displacement. So this type of reaction is called displacement reaction. That means a more reactive metal can replace a less reactive. Understood? Here I will show you some example. Iron is react with copper sulfate to form iron sulfate plus copper. When copper is combined with the silver nitrate solution, copper nitrate and silver will come. When sodium is combined with the zinc carbonate, sodium carbonate plus zinc. Magnesium combined with the iron oxide, magnesium oxide and 
iron will form gold and copper carbonate combine together to form gold plus copper carbonate displacement reactions in displacement a more active element displaces or takes the place of a less active element in a compound these are also called single displacement reactions let's understand these with the help of our blocks here so let's say here we have element a and compound bc now a is more reactive than b so it's going to displace or push off b and combine with c so now b is alone here so we have ac plus b this is a displacement reaction as we saw here the more active element a is displacing the less active element b now how do we know which element is more reactive than the other in chemistry we have a reactivity series here's what it looks like for metals metals on the top are more reactive and as you move down the reactivity decreases for example if you look here sodium is more reactive than iron hydrogen is also in this list even though it's a non metal because it's electropositive in nature and can be displaced by metals there is also a reactivity series for non metals the halogens this is what the simple reactivity series for important halogens looks like fluorine is the most reactive and iodine is the least reactive now let's look at some examples of displacement reactions let's say we have zinc and hydrochloric acid here now since zinc is more reactive than hydrogen according to the reactivity series it can displace it so we get zinc chloride and hydrogen this is our displacement reaction another example is potassium iodide and chlorine this example involves non metals chlorine is more reactive than iodine so chlorine can displace iodine from potassium iodide and we get potassium chloride and iodine so here we had displacement of non metals now let's try predicting the next reaction what happens when an iron nail is placed in copper sulfate solution first let's write down the reactants so here we have iron and copper sulfate now we know that iron is more reactive than copper so iron is going to displace copper from copper sulfate and what are we going to get here in the displacement reaction that's right copper and iron sulfate we can even predict the observations based on this reaction so we know that copper sulfate is blue in color and iron sulfate is green in color so the color of the solution is going to change from blue to green and since you have copper being deposited here you're going to see a reddish brown deposit on the iron nail now what do you think will happen if a copper piece is placed in iron sulfate solution what are the products now that's right there's going to be no reaction because copper is below iron in the reactivity series so copper cannot displace iron let's put displacement reaction on our concept board remember the key point a more active element is displacing a lesser active element oxidation reduction reaction in oxidation reaction any process involving addition of oxygen or removal of hydrogen or loss of electron is known as oxidation reaction in oxidation reduction reactions the electrons are transferred from one reactant to another oxidation means it loses electrons reduction means gain electrons here i will show you one example in the reaction between sodium and chlorine the sodium lost an electron it has been oxidized while the chlorine gained an electron it has been reduced see the another example what about the reaction between aluminum and oxygen 
oxygen gained two electrons it has been reduced while aluminium lost three electrons it has been oxidized redox reactions redox stands for reduction and oxidation in these reactions one substance is being reduced and the other is being oxidized First, let's understand the meaning of these terms, oxidation and reduction. In simple terms, oxidation means addition of oxygen and reduction means addition of hydrogen. But there are other ways of defining oxidation and reduction. So let's go ahead and make a table of oxidation versus reduction. We just discussed the first difference. Oxidation is addition of oxygen and reduction is defined as addition of hydrogen. Oxidation can also be defined as removal of hydrogen and reduction is removal of oxygen. Now oxidation need not be only addition of oxygen. We can expand the definition to addition of any non-metal or electronegative element. Similarly, reduction can be addition of a metal or electropositive element. Now we can define oxidation as removal of a metal or electropositive element and similarly reduction is removal of a non-metal or electronegative element. Oxidation can also be defined as loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. You can remember the last difference with the help of this simple mnemonic oil rig. Oil stands for oxidation is loss of electrons and RIG stands for reduction is gain of electrons. Let's look at some examples of redox reactions. Let's say we have copper oxide and hydrogen here and when they react we get copper and water. Now if you look carefully this is a displacement reaction because hydrogen is displacing copper from the compound copper oxide. Now let's take a look from the redox point of view. So if you look here, copper oxide is losing oxygen and becoming copper. So copper oxide is getting reduced here. And hydrogen is gaining oxygen and becoming water. So hydrogen is getting oxidized in this reaction. And remember, always the reactants get oxidized or reduced, not the products. In this reaction, Hydrogen is helping copper oxide to get reduced to copper. So hydrogen is the reducing agent. And copper oxide is helping hydrogen get oxidized to water. So copper oxide is acting as the oxidizing agent. So remember, the substance that gets oxidized is the reducing agent. And the substance that gets reduced is the oxidizing agent. Now let's take a look at some more examples of redox reactions. Let's say here we have copper and oxygen and when they react we get copper oxide. Now who do you think is being oxidized and reduced here? Let's take a look. So if you look at copper, copper is changing to copper oxide. So oxygen is being added to copper. So copper is being oxidized here. Now what about oxygen? Since a metal is being added to it, oxygen is being reduced. So oxygen is our oxidizing agent and copper is the reducing agent in this redox reaction. Let's look at another example. Hydrogen sulfide and chlorine react to give hydrogen chloride and sulfur. Now who do you think is getting oxidized and reduced in this reaction? Remember. The answer to this question is only the reactants, not the products. So let's take a look at the reactants. So if we see hydrogen sulfide, it's changing to sulfur. Since hydrogen sulfide is losing hydrogen, so that's correct, it's getting oxidized. And if you look at chlorine, hydrogen is being added to it and it's becoming hydrogen chloride. So chlorine is being reduced here. Let's spin redox reaction on our concept board. Remember the key point, reduction 
and oxidation are both taking place. Precipitation reaction. The reaction in which one of the products form is an insoluble substance and is thrown out of the solution as a solid called precipitate is called precipitation reaction. We studied this experiment before. The lime water test for carbon dioxide is a precipitation reaction. Lime water is actually a dilute solution of calcium hydroxide. Lime water means calcium hydroxide. The calcium hydroxide reacts with the carbon dioxide to form calcium carbonate which is insoluble in water. See the reaction. Calcium hydroxide plus carbon dioxide gives calcium carbonate plus water. Calcium carbonate means a milky color. See the slide how the precipitation will come. I hope you understood the lesson. Thank you.